G'day viewers, Jason, June Lap Electrical Services. I'm on the road again. I, last time I did a video when I was on the road, I was at the bottom of Western Australia. About, I don't know, 1500 kilometers away from Perth. And this time I'm at the opposite end of Western Australia, up near the Northern Territory border. And something that I've just run into, uh, which I thought was rather interesting, um, the nearest fuel station is 200 k's that way, which is Halls Creek. Um, Fitzroy Crossing is behind me. Um, I think that's about 150 k's away, so that's probably a bit closer, but I'm going that way. I'm going to Darwin. And I've just stopped to put 40 litres of diesel from jerry cans in my car, which has given me, what, three quarters of a tank. And that'll get me to Halls Creek, and then I'll fill up again, and then I'll go through to Kununurra. But out here, in the middle of nowhere, in the outback, as I pulled into this rest spot, corrugations are quite bad is an EV charging station electric vehicle charging station which I think is pretty cool that so shows you know the level of commitment from the West Australian government to um, commit to uh, renewable energy sources and especially with charging vehicles and that infrastructure required for electric vehicles um, I know if I had an electric vehicle I would uh, very much appreciate this, you can see it just there, charging station out in the middle of nowhere. Um, this is a paid charging station. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that aren't familiar with electric vehicles, you can um, download an app called PlugShare and that tells you where all the different uh, charge points are around Australia. And um, something like this one you're going to pay for. I don't know how fast this one charges. I'd say it's probably 25 kilowatts, but we'll get out and have a bit of a look. Uh, this one's powered by the Horizon Power Network and WAEV Network, uh, which is all pretty cool. I know there's been quite a few people now that have traveled around Australia in electric vehicles. Um, so the transition to renewable energy sources is is alive and well. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm towing a trailer. There's no way I could tow a trailer in an electric vehicle at the moment. I could maybe do it in one of the new hybrid, what do you call it, BYD Shark. don't know what the towing capacity is, but unfortunately, with an electric vehicle, as soon as you start towing anything, you drastically reduce your range. Um, so we've got two charge leads here. Doesn't look like they're used very often. That's what your DC fast charge leads look like. Um, that would be the same uh, at your home one if you were to have like a uh, SIG Energy bi-directional uh, DC charger in your house. That's no different. And what have we got? Your Wi-Fi pay. Oh, it's 50 kilowatt, cool. So you charge pretty quick. Enough time to have a rest and a walk around, that sort of thing. Um, and we've got a whole heap of solar panels there, which would no doubt be charging some batteries in that building over there. Now I know a lot of people scoff at these sort of arrangements. I know there's one on the Nullarbor which doesn't have um, solar panels. It's just a diesel generator, um, which yeah, Okay, you're burning fossil fuels to charge your electric car. Um, doesn't really quite make sense, but you know, you have to start somewhere. Um, and unless you've got a massive array of solar panels like that, then you're always gonna need a diesel generator anyway, because there's gonna be those times when the sun's not gonna be shining. There's possibly a high load, you know, a few EVs coming through and charging up. So the same with any off-grid solar system, uh, you must have a diesel generator. Um, so this one is to supplement the power of the solar and the batteries, which is great, but I know there are some out there which are just a diesel generator, which, like I said, doesn't quite make sense, but hey, we're building that infrastructure and making it possible for electric vehicles to travel around Australia. 
Um, so no doubt in there we'd have uh, inverter enclosure there, another inverter enclosure there by the looks of it, and then battery isolation panel. So I'd say there's batteries and inverters in there. Uh, quite a large amount of batteries I would think. Ah, nice big SMA on the back of them there. That's pretty cool. So they must have uh, the inverters that would be in this building would be standalone inverters, I would imagine. Obviously we can't see in there. Can't see what those solar panels are, but there's a lot of them. A lot of them. Very neat. I suppose with the whole, you know, if you've got solar at home, I've got a SIG energy system with a couple of EV chargers, which I'm gonna put up soon. Um, that's fantastic. They can charge their electric vehicles from home using uh, their own solar power, which makes perfect sense. 100% uh, renewable energy to charge that electric vehicle. Yes, you've got the whole debate of, you know, what about all the fossil fuels that was used to make those batteries? And I 100% agree. It's horrific the amount of fossil fuels that are used to make these solar panels and make the batteries i know i was carting lithium for a while from a mine site when i had a break from the solar and battery industry for about 18 months i went back to truck driving and i was carting lithium out of a mine site near kalgoorlie down to uh esperance and the truck would use I think it was about 750 litres for a trip, not to mention the fuel used by the loaders and all the mining equipment. And then it would go down to a port in Esperance and then it would go on a, a bulk carrier to China, spewing out that disgusting bulk fuel that they burn when they're out at sea. And then obviously you've got all the processing to turn it into a lithium battery. And then you've got the cost of transporting that battery in that car back to its origin, Australia, if you want to use that as, a, as an example. So I, I don't know, I've never looked at the numbers, but I highly doubt the offset would be worth it. But You've also, I think in my own head, I try and justify it that you, you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs, if you like. So yeah, we're creating a lot of pollution at the moment, making all these batteries and all this renewable energy, but you would hope that those lithium batteries can be recycled and repurposed into new electric vehicles. Once we've got all those minerals dug up and processed, they're there, they don't have to go through all that process again, they just have to be uh, repurposed, rebuilt, recycled, recharged, I don't know. I'm just a sparky. But um, it's pretty cool, I like it. Uh, jet charge. Um, so yeah, there we go, middle of, nowhere and we've got this beautiful big solar array and the charging station i like it wish i could charge my high ace with uh electricity instead of having to pump diesel into it at two dollars thirty a liter and my diesel engine is only probably 30 or 40 percent efficient at best at best uh the rest of it 60 percent or whatever it just goes out the exhaust in heat and uh uh, moving parts and just wasted energy so food for thought there we go catch you later guys